Hello Lucas here again. This is the part 2 of my platform game in XNA, 2D platform game in XNA. And I'm going to talk about the code. So I will start with the player hero object that is the main hero which you could see on a, on the a screen. Um, w w what it is is just uh, a player object which is just drawable object that has a transform and graphing component and also there is loads of variable that I passed in like a player shield object that he's blocking with uh, that I know when the bullets collide with it help bar object that is displayed as a hood um, then it has velocity key uh, that I know if I can unlock the door um, there is the constructor uh, set default velocity just a function that I'm using stop velocity update is called every time and then applying a collision, applying gravity handle, it would update the state that is if he dies. Uh, and then uh, this is just a printout that I needed for a player if I wanted to know what is his position, doesn't need to be there. Um, and then update the base. Display health bar that just displays the hood. Remove health bar that just removes the hood. Uh, health bar that you could see in the left, left uh, corner. Update state, this is when he dies, what happens, that it's gonna be played, game over sound, and uh, after a certain amount of time, that the sound, like, that I didn't want it just to show the menu and then sound was played when there was a menu, so I made a delay so the menu shows after the sound is played, or a little bit after it starts playing. Apply gravity is just that I'm applying every time the velocity vector, and it can be flipped, so it can be minus or plus there. <coughs> Handle input that in this code it's block, move, jump uh, or flip player. That's the, all the functions that he can do. Uh, also, if I want to disable the movement when the gravity is sweeping, I just put uh, swapping. I just put this move inside of this flipping gravity, and he cannot move. But I found it easier if he could move while he was flipping gravity. Uh, with the block, if he press B, just simple. It shows the shield, and then it's flip it depending on the position. Um, and then it's blocking bullets, of course. If it's if it's not a uh, shield raised, then he he's not blocking bullets with a shield. Now, when he's moving, um, this is a simple boolean to check if there is a wall on the side that I set up uh, to to be true or false. And then the graphic component starts playing. So pause true means that it's playing. So it looks like he is moving, and then if he is not moving, then I pause the graphic component, and I, when he is jumping, I set it to a tree, and then when he is standing, I set it to one. Uh, when he jumps, that is when he presses the space bar and has jump equals fall, so he cannot jump many times when he jump once, or when he is falling, he cannot jump because he is not touching the ground. Uh, this is just that I set up velocity to minus 5 and then it goes from minus 5 to minus 4, 3, 2, 1 or like 0 0.15 so I'm just giving an example and then it goes back. If it's flipped gravity of course it has to be from plus to minus. Um, this could be changed if you want a player to jump higher or uh, uh, go down faster. Uh, flip player. Uh, if I want to flip player, it's really simple. I just set the uh, default velocity y to be minus or plus, and then uh, the player is flipped equals true, and I used it somewhere else in the code where I need it, and I set up the sprite effect for the player so the uh, the texture looks like it's flipped. Um, apply collision constraints. I put the collision for a movable platform and a platform in a player because it was for me simpler to just adjust the stuff I needed in a player's code base. Um, in a movable platform it's a little bit tricky and it's still not working super perfect but it's working somehow. I calculate the offset, so I take the position of the player and position of the platform, so when he jumps on the platform he should stay at the position that he jumped, and then I lock that position and then I always add that offset in, and offset it's also in a movement, if he's on a movable platform this offset is adding so it looks like he's moving on movable platform, but I think that when the platform is moving, it's uh, uh, it should be added if it's moving to positive direction and player wants to move to positive direction to the offset, but I just wasn't sure how to do it properly. Um, then I have the simple not movable platform, it's really easy. If he intersects, and now when he touches with legs, I just uh, set everything I need so he cannot jump, offset is zero, stop the velocity, uh, 
flipping gravity it's false so he can flip again and then he is not on movable platform so I don't need to calculate offsets and everything there and then when he doesn't touches with the legs that means he touches with the head so he doesn't uh, if he collides with the head that he doesn't get stuck on top of the head and it, then it will you know apply no gravity so it will look like he's stuck with the head on top of the wall um, so we just returns and then if nothing else happens that he has jumped equals true because he's falling down um, this is for wall this is the apply collision constraints for a wall so he cannot move left or right so if the collision detection vector of the wall is uh, lower than a player he cannot move left it's the opposite way he cannot move right um, and then I set it back to be false so he can move again and then this is just simple clone for uh, enemy object this is the enemy uh, again apply collision it's just a collision test with a player um, so if it is a player and he has jumped so if he jumps on enemy then I uh, remove the enemy or else I'm going to uh, damage the player like with the time delay so it just doesn't instantly kill him but he has the time to respond and then I uh, I can set up the enemy to be moving or just patrol or just stay on a posi uh, on a one spot and it's applying a curve to the enemy as well which is going from side to side and getting the position of the curve at a certain time and then I'm flipping the enemy depending on <coughs> where it's going um, an animated enemy I'm just getting animated graphics component as you could see the flies were flipping the wings when they were moving health bar object this is just a simple health um, Oh, sorry. Th this is the health bar object on top of the screen. Which one? Uh, it's moving with the camera, and it's always in the top left-hand corner. Bullet object. This is the object that it's the cannon shooting, and if a bullet collides with the player or with the shield, then it uh, uh, if it collides with the player, it damages him. So I deduct the health on intersect. If it collides with the shield, I uh, deduct the shield block amount by one uh, cannon object uh, this is the cannon that shoots the bullets and it has a fire rate so it shoots with the delay uh, fire with delay as you can see here I'm just going to get the delay then I'm going to use a fire so it creates a new bullet and fires the bullet and then I uh, play fire sound also in a bullet object I'm disposing the bullets uh, after a certain amount of time um, disable spike object is that yellow star if I step on it I remove all the spikes from a game growth health potion is the potion that I took at the uh, at the end of the game and what it does it just scales the players image so he looks like he grew <coughs> grow bigger and then I remove the object always this is all when I'm applying the collision with the health held object um, just uh, removing the object this is when uh, I press the lever Th this code is here because if I'm resetting the game I don't want there to be the object when he pressed the lever there will be held by our object that will be added to the object manager and then I don't want it to be there when I respawn at the point if I die in the second level so this is the part when I'm going that if that is the lever hard I'm going to remove only that hard otherwise I'm going to remove and the remove function it's also get into my reset uh, the the objects that I remove I'm putting into my reset list in case he dies then I just take them out of my reset list and put them back into the normal list so it starts drawing them again and then I play the sound of the refill uh, drink key object this is the object when I pick it up I puts it into player key so the player key becomes the key and then I can uh, um, remove the uh, key from the map and I can use it to open the door movable shield object is just a shield object uh, which is blocking which is not even blocking bullets because this is the object that I just pick up and I pick up the object I the player shield that th that's that's the shield that I'm blocking with will be in player hands so I set it up that it's in player hands and I can block the bullets with the shield otherwise I cannot use it uh, if I press the B it's not in player hands it doesn't displays and uh, player, shi pl player shield object is the object that uh, the player has in his hands uh, and as you can see that has the block amount how much he can block and then that 
takes damage, the shield takes damage, and then update. Um, then cloud object is just the background, so this is in the main. I show you when I created my map, and it has a Z depth, so it's all the clouds are behind all the other objects. Damaging terrain objects, I used it for a lava and spike, so it has the deduct held on it intersect, which is just the uh, amount I set up, and you can pass it into constructor, so it can be different for the different spikes or different lava. Door object, it's the object that I can unlock when I take the key, so as you can see there is the checked player, he cannot be null, and then you have to press the unlock key, then I remove the door, re reset the key, um, Reset the shield because I'm going into next map. Map change. So as you can see, this uh, this is the event le ev uh, event handler. So it says it uh, says that the event of a map level change just happened. So my camera knows that it has to move into the second map. Play the open door sound and uh, I set up the door block to be false so I can m move. Uh, because this is the door block, if he is colliding with the door, he cannot move to the r to the side, to the right side. Um, this is the movable damaging terrain object. It's just the damaging terrain objects that uh, it's moving, it's applying a curve, and the position is changing. Then same with the movable platform object. I just show you the simple platform object. I the, the collision is in a player's class, so this is just really a drawable drawable object that I draw on the screen and a movable. It's uh, if it's if the move is on, I'm uh, moving the platform according to the curve that I apply to it. With the wall object, that means I cannot move uh, left or right, and it also the collision is in player player's class. It was just for simplicity. <laughs> if I go to main, there is the I show you an another thing here is that uh, uh, registering for events that I added. Uh, so if the player dead happened or a map map level changed, I'm going to move camera, uh, turn on, turn off the cannons in the different rooms in my map so it doesn't always shoot the bullets, and then the dearest position that camera moves in, and then I set up the level hero that which part is here, <coughs> then I can do additional stuff if I want in the if else if statement, I just have it for the last one that I scales him back when he dies. So it doesn't stay big when when you die in the last level. Uh, in my load map is this is the code when I'm loading my map. This is the load map. So this is the first map. This is the second map, and this is the third map. And there are there is all the functions. I know it looks hideous because I use loads of these small square textures, so it's just lo loads of code that was just loading these small textures. So that would be all for the classes that I used in my code. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.